How's it going everybody? I've had this scroll saw in my shop for about six years now and it's honestly one of the most used tools in my shop. And even though I strongly believe this is the best scroll saw on the market, it isn't without its issues. So in this video, I'm going to go over all of the features that make this the best option for any shop and a few things that you should know before you actually go and buy one. <laughs> This is the DW788 DeWalt scroll saw, and mine is the Type 2. The only difference that I could find between the Type 1 and Type 2 scroll saws are that the Type 1 was made in either US or Canada, and the Type 2s are made out in China. Other than where they're made, there really doesn't seem to be much of a difference. This one has a 1.3 amp motor, which feels more than sufficient when cutting through thick pieces of wood. The cutter arm at its lowest point measures 2 and 1 8 inch above the table, making that its total capacity. Generally, I don't prefer to cut through anything thicker than a 2x4 on this though, because you do have a tendency to break blades when you cut through thicker materials, although it can do it. My favorite blades to use are the Olsen Skip Tooth Blades and the Hook Tooth Blades. Those are by far my favorite because they go really well through thick material. So if you want to check out those or the scroll saw itself, links to everything will be down in the description. Changing the blades on this is incredibly easy, it's just a series of two thumb screws. I start by putting the blade in place and tightening the bottom thumb screw first. Make sure the head of the scroll saw is as far down as it can go, and then just tighten the thumb screw in place. And then re-tighten, and it's ready to go. The general rule of thumb is the tighter the blade is, the more accurate it will be, but also the more likely you are to break blades, so you just have to find a balance point. I usually only tighten to about a 3 or 4. One of my absolute favorite features of this scroll saw is the oversized cast iron table. When I pulled this thing out of the box for the first time, my wife was there and she told me, it looks like the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> She's since told me that this is her favorite tool because of that. Now the capacity on this scroll saw is actually pretty wide. Unlike a bandsaw, a scroll saw capacity is limited by how far you can push the board through rather than how wide of a board you can mill. This scroll saw has a capacity of 20 inches to the blade, but 28 inches to the edge of the table. In the six years that I've owned this thing, the limited capacity has only come up once on this thing. <laughs> Remember, if the capacity ever is an issue, you also have an option to switch over to a spiral cut blade, which means you can cut in more than one direction. Those can really get you out of a jam if you need them. Another feature that I really like about this scroll saw is how easy it is to change your angle. It has this angle gauge on the front, all you have to do is unscrew the knob and you can turn it to anything under just, just a little bit over 45 degrees. So no matter what angle you set this thing to, it always feels incredibly rigid and secure, so there's really no worry about whether or not it's going to move on you while you're cutting. But keep in mind, this does reduce your capacity. Although the angle gauge does seem to give you a very accurate measurement of what angle you're at, I like to use these digital angle finders to really dial in my settings. I'll put a link in the description to one of these too, because this is a must-have tool for any woodshop. Now we're going to get into the three things that I really don't like about this scroll saw. The first one is the foot that it comes with. Now, it's not that the foot doesn't work, it's that I just don't like things to be in my way while I'm cutting. Now, if you ask anyone else, they're going to tell you that they like using the foot because it keeps the board from coming up towards the head of the scroll saw while you're cutting. I took mine off years ago and have since lost it, and I just generally don't like to use it. Of course, you get to choose what you do with yours. Another thing that I don't really like about this is after about four years of use, this blower broke off. The blower itself actually works amazing. It does keep your workspace completely clear while you're cutting so you can continuously see your line even in the middle of a cut. You don't have to blow on it like you do with other tools. However, since this broke off, every year or so I seem to have to glue this thing back on so that it keeps working. Of course, I could just go buy a new one, but this works. Now, if you've already done your research into this saw, there is a known issue that you need to know before you purchase one of these. And that is this plug right here on the inside of the potentiometer. This thing is notorious for getting a loose connection over time, so if you ever notice that your scroll saw stops working or the potentiometer isn't working appropriately, take it apart, re-plug this part in, and the majority of the time that is going to be the fix. You don't need to buy any parts for this. Which is fantastic information, because if you wanted to actually replace the potentiometer, you have to buy the entire control assembly and the whole thing is over $100 and most places don't even sell it anymore. So keep that in mind. All that being said, I do highly recommend using this saw. Like I said, it is one of the saws that I use most in the shop, and this thing has been running pretty constantly since I got it about six years ago. With that much use, you're going to find things that you don't like about any tool that you own. But I also want to hear your opinion. If you have a scroll saw, what kind of scroll saw do you use, and would you recommend it? And does it solve any of the problems that I showed in this video? I'd love to hear your feedback. And let me know if this is something you would ever consider purchasing for your shop. 
Anyway, thank y'all for watching. Catch y'all next time.